Here we go, video 7-1, the start of chemical formulas and compounds. And we're gonna review briefly here why chemical formulas are important, as well as a few rules for assigning oxidation numbers. Let's begin here with why our chemical formulas are significant. They're basically telling you the number of atoms in a chemical compound. We know that ionic compounds, they consist of formula units, whereas covalent compounds, which are molecular compounds, consist of molecules. So let's look at an example of a chemical formula. Here we have some aluminum and SO4. That's a polyatomic sulfate ion. You should recognize that. These small subscripts here are going to tell you how many atoms are present for that compound or for that element. Again, this is something you should jot down in your notes so you know subscripts here as well as down in this example what this is here. This is what we call a coefficient. So if there is a number in front of the compound, we call that a coefficient, it's going to tell you how many formula units in this case are present. If this was a molecule such, such as H2O, then we, we could say that there are two molecules of H2O. Here, Al2SO4, aluminum sulfate, is a formula unit because it's an ionic compound and that we're going to say there are two formula units of aluminum sulfate. Real quick, I want to cover just as a reminder charges. If you don't remember that the group number for one, two, all of the tall columns, three, four, five to eight, the group number tells you the number of valence electrons, which we have in red here. So the number of valence electrons, that's right there, as well as the charge number. So the typical charge formed by group one is plus one, plus two, plus three, because again, it's easier to lose one, two, or three electrons to get to a stable energy level than it is to gain five. At the plus or minus four here for carbon, silicon, germanium, etc., it's plus or minus four, so it can go either way. And then we get our anions here. So they're going to gain electrons to get to the stable noble gas state of eight electrons in their S and P orbitals, very stable. Our transition metals down here, and we'll change color here, transition metals down here, we are not going to say do they have a charge or not because they transition in between charges. But on your periodic table, it's kind of harder to see here. There are these little subcharges on the side. These indicate the general charge that our transition metals typically form, and we can use those in assigning charges to those compounds. So that's something important to get down in your notes. And then real quick here, talk about oxidation numbers. They're different than charges, although a lot of times people think that they're somewhat synonymous, they go together, they're not really. It's more of an arbitrary way to demonstrate basically how electrons are distributed in a molecule. And here we're dealing only with molecules, so we know we are only dealing with covalent compounds. Atoms of a pure element are going to have an oxidation number of zero. So for example here, we remember that O2, it's a diatomic. It always forms as O2. Its oxidation is going to be zero. Even though there's two in the molecule, it's a pure element. It's going to have oxidation number of zero. The more electronegative element receives the oxidation number it would if it was an anion. So for an example here, if we had sulfur and oxygen, SO2, as an example. Well, oxygen's more electronegative than sulfur, so oxygen here, it would typically have an 
oxidation number of minus two. And that's what the next rule kind of states here is that fluorine, the most electronegative element on the periodic table, always minus one. Oxygen is the next, it's going to be minus two, although there are some exceptions. And then hydrogen usually gets plus one. A lot of times you're going to see this referred to as when they have charges on them, so like F minus. People will say that's its oxidation number, and it is basically synonymous with its charge, but they're not the same just because charges deal primarily with ionic compounds. Oxidation numbers are more related to our covalent counterparts.